All right, guys. Hey, Josh Fierstein with my beautiful wife, hey, Jessica. Guys. And welcome to the first ever episode of Josh Plus Jess. In the future, you're going to be able to go to joshplusjess.com and there's going to be all of the episodes there. And you can binge watch them if you should decide to do so. Uh, so it's episode number one. And it's just, just a conversation between myself and my wife and us talking a lot of times about family and marriage because those seem to be the things that are just kind of under attack these mm -hmm. days. And so we wanted to talk a little bit about our family, our marriage, things and situations, circumstances, just, you know, everything from on how to fight, how to fight properly, how to raise your kids, how to do like stuff that a lot of times like the church doesn't talk about just good mm -hmm. Bible based advice. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we'll be going to scriptures. Other times we'll be telling stories, but I think it's going to be a really fun ride. We hope that you enjoy it and join us on it. So make sure by the end of this, that you just click subscribe. So Let's start off with our story because ours is a little bit of an interesting one. Mm -hmm. um, well, I don't know. Should I start? Yeah, you start. Okay. <laughs> uh, we got married at 33, but let me tell you before 33, life sucked. When I say life sucked, I had a lot of ups and downs, a lot of good times. But uh, ultimately, when my wife and I first met each other, I was actually in a very just ugly, deep, dark depression. And the reason I was there is even in my 20s, I had had a lot of success. A uh, young guy had pastored a successful church, was doing the whole television thing, and everyone was thinking and saying that I was going to be the next big thing, right? And then I fell in love with this girl, or so I thought. Um, you know, it's like Garth Brooks says, sometimes I thank God for unanswered prayers. Remember when you're talking to the man upstairs. Just because he doesn't answer doesn't, doesn't mean he don't care. Does it take it over? Yeah. So um, here's the thing. I was praying for this girl. Oh, God. Oh, I love her. Please. Meanwhile, she left me, I don't know, over five and a half years, probably four or five different times for different guys. And I just kept taking her back. Right. And it was just this cycle. Finally, we get engaged. You know, if you like it, then you better put a ring on it. So I put a ring on it. But unfortunately, well, <laughs> yeah. That didn't work out. She decided that she liked the drummer more than she liked me of the church that I pastored, right? And uh, I went through this embarrassing, humiliating breakup where she left me. I didn't even want to pastor the church anymore. I resigned the, I started the church in my living room with three people. And I resigned the church that I just had put all my blood, sweat, and tears into because I was too embarrassed to even stand in the pulpit because I had just suffered the life's worst rejection. Mm -hmm. And so I go through this depression, put on a hundred and some pounds, and I'm literally looking in the mirror at my stretch marks, at my body that looks like, I mean, I was an inflatable. And I'm thinking like, there's nobody that's ever going to love me, right? I'm just in this miserable place. Meanwhile, my wife, Jessica, is going through kind of her, her own trial, right? Yeah. Yeah, I was actually probably around the same time um, I was married. We had three beautiful children, um, pregnant. And we found out that my late husband had stage four cancer. Well, if life couldn't get any worse, the Lord told us to move in with his parents while he went through treatments. And it was just, it was a really, really just crazy, heartbreaking season. Because there's nothing easier than living with your in-laws. <laughs> it's actually kind of fun. We do that right now, huh? Yeah. Anyway, um, so he was going through cancer treatments. I was taking care of kids, pregnant, ended up being his caregiver. And I just remember feeling so just destitute and, you know, when you're a wife, a lot of your dreams are in inside of your husband, really. You look to them as your leader. And so I felt like, you know, as he was slipping away, my future was slipping away. I was like, Lord, I don't know how this is all going to work out. I had so many questions. And, you know, in that time and in that season, I just remember I've never felt that close to God because I, it's like I had everything being stripped away from me except for him. And it was actually one of the best things that could ever happen to me. And about a month and a half before my late husband passed away, um, we had just found out that he had, like, the cancer had taken off in his body. It wasn't just in one spot. It was in many. And he was really feeling awful. And um, I just remember that he sat me down and he said, you know what? He said, the Lord has been sort of not speaking to me. He said, but, you know, I prayed and I asked God. I said, God, if you take me, he said, I pray that you would just send a man that would love you like I love you and raise and love the kids. Like, I love them. And so in that moment, look at that. In that moment, I just really didn't want to hear those words. It was probably, it was just the most gut-wrenching thing ever. But 
fast forward after my late husband passed away and I moved back to my hometown of Colville. Um, when Josh came into our lives, it was like, wow, this is God answering my late husband's prayers. It was just, it was amazing. So, so. but okay. My wife is the most humble person in the world. I myself, <laughs> maybe not so much. Okay. Still praying for him. But the reality is this, if I could just tell you for a second, how strong my wife is. Okay. My wife, the day that Dave passed away, got all of her kids. Now, mind you, she had a one-month-old baby. Mm -hmm. Isaac was a month old when, 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 when Dave passed away. She got all four kids together on a Sunday morning. David passed away just an hour earlier. She gets them all dressed, and she says, you know what? We're going to go to church and worship God. Because even though Daddy's passed away, mm -hmm. God is still good. And that takes a really, really strong person. And it's funny because... All of my life, especially as I've been traveling, preaching, and, uh, you know, I'm not trying to say this in a braggadocious way, but after you've been on television and stuff, you make a little bit of a name for yourself. And it's it's almost like pastors, like, breed girls in their church to marry you, right? That's and true. so even though I'm not, like, the hottest dude in the world, I would go to a church, and it's like, do you like her, or do you like her? Or maybe we can offer you our super deluxe edition over here. <laughs> and uh, so... I like, there were all these options, pretty girls, good girls, but I had never met a girl that had like just incredible spiritual depth. And when I met my wife on hotrichwidows.com, no, I'm kidding, it wasn't true. hotrichwidows.com. Um, I had actually been friends with Dave, uh, her late husband. And then one night her, the Facebook account signed on. And I thought either they have Facebook in heaven, which mm -hmm. I highly doubt. Uh, because Mark Zuckerberg would try to censor him. Um, or this is Jess. And so I just wrote her a little message saying, hey, anything we can do for you, blah, blah, blah. And it was just kind of, it was just very, very natural. It was just a very natural progression of talking, befriending each other. But I think we both pretty much knew that first night that there was something magical. Like you there was heard- There's a lot of smiley faces going on. Yeah. Yeah. I think you heard the sound of music, right? Yeah. The sound of music started playing in her heart, right? <laughs> I love that movie. It's such a great movie. But it's funny because I was not like immediately welcomed, right? Because a lot of people did not understand that God had brought us both to a very particular place. And mm -hmm. it was it was, it was was hard for people to accept it because, uh, now mind you, she had gone through losing a husband that had taken a process of a year, maybe even a year and a half. Yeah, it was around a year Like it was a very long, long time. And so that had been slowly dying already. Like it had already died off. And so... When we meet, it was actually a breath of fresh air. And for me, obviously, uh, finding some more. But then I'm thinking to myself, okay, well, uh, four kids. Like, uh, we've never slept together. And now I'm going to have four kids. Uh, and I'm thinking to myself, what in the world? And people are telling me this. And people are telling her that. And yada, yada. Every reason. But you know what's beautiful is when God puts something together. Now, That's today, true. those four beautiful kids are bone of my bone, flesh of my flesh. Like they are the most precious thing. Now we've had an additional two. So now I got six kids, right? But it's funny because, and we're not going to, we're going to try not to be too long with this first episode, but it's funny because when, when you are part of the kingdom of God, like when you rely on God, you know, we're standing here in a kitchen, right? And the scripture says this, it says all things work together for the good of those that Love God. Now, if I'm here in a kitchen and I were to pull out, you know, cocoa powder and if I were to pull out butter and I were to pull out flour and I were to pull out all of these different ingredients mm -hmm. and I were just to take a bite of butter, it would be disgusting. A handful of flour, it would be gross. If I were to take a handful of cocoa powder, chocolate, it would be gross, right? But it's amazing because you take all of those bitter things and when you put them in a mixing bowl and you begin to stir them together, all things, even the bitter things, the individually, you're going to have situations and circumstances and trials and tribulations in your life that, that are going to seem in and of themselves to taste bitter. But God has a way of mixing them all together and creating something beautiful out of it. So you cannot get a gorgeous, beautiful cake unless you mix together different ingredients that by themselves don't taste good. And that's exactly what God did for us. We dated... Uh, a year, maybe? Yeah, all together. And when I say <laughs> we still went through stuff, right? Like the first time I met her dad, he literally said, I think I think uh, my oh daughter's my still grieving because uh, you're, you know, her late husband was athletic and good looking and you're not one of those things, right? 
And, <laughs> My dad's a really sweet man. Let me just add that. He's a, he's a, he's a now suit. they're BFFs. So yeah, we're can't... pretty much BFFs yeah. now, right? Yeah. But it's funny because God, God took all of the negative. He just worked it all together for the good, right? Yeah. And maybe right now you're facing one of those situations in your life where it just seems dismal. Maybe you're at a place where I was or where she was mm -hmm. just, what, eight, nine years ago where all of a sudden you're just saying like, how can God work anything good out of this. I'm at a very ugly place, but I want to stand here today with my wife as a testimony. Uh, we're both testimonies to the fact that God can take that which is trash and turn it into treasure. He can take the ugly, the rejected, he can take the broken, and he just has a way, it's almost like a stained glass window of piecing it back together. He takes all the broken shards of glass and makes beautiful art out of it. And that's our life, that's our marriage, and we're gonna be talking a lot about the ugly things, right? The things that we still face, the 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 little things, the the fights, the arguments, the discord, this, that, little little nuances of marriage, relationship, having a godly family. You're gonna wanna be a part of it. So make sure to subscribe, share it. If you know a family, if you know somebody that's going through a bad time in their life, make sure to share this with them. But we wanna close today in prayer. So we wanna pray over you. Heavenly Father, you see every person that's watching this right now. And Lord, I just pray that right now, this very moment, that you would wrap them in your heavenly arms. God, that you would hold them close to you. Let them feel your love, your grace, your mercy, your kindness, your forgiveness. And Lord, for those right now that are facing a broken situation in their life, I pray right now in the powerful name of Jesus that you would begin to put back together the broken places of their life. Give them hope through today's show that they can have a better tomorrow, that they're not going to be stuck in darkness, but God, that you're going to usher them into this marvelous light, that you're going to give them joy, love, hope, peace, prosperity, happiness. God, that their future is so bright that they're going to have to put on sunglasses to look at it. We just pray that in the wonderful name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Thank you so much for being part of episode number one on Josh plus Jess. God bless. That wasn't even planned. <laughs>